Now that we've completed our four-part series on how to analyze diction, syntax, figurative language, and tone, I think it's time that we move on to a sample analysis. So the idea here is to take an excerpt of a text and then analyze it fully in a paragraph. So here we go, how to analyze a text. Now, what follows is an excerpt of Kennedy's speech, and you know the one I'm talking about, the moon one, in a sample analysis of that excerpt. And while it isn't perfect, it does work because it identifies the overall strategies and the devices that the writer employs and the ultimate purpose, the intended outcome of the text. Okay, so here's the excerpt. No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we've come, but condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of but a half century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except that at the end of them, advanced men had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned how to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less, less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then, less than two months ago, during this whole 50-year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton just explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. And only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. And now, if America is to... Uh, America's new spacecraft succeeds in reaching Venus, we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. Okay, so that's the excerpt. Now, this is an initial analysis of that excerpt, meaning a, uh, a response that works. If I were to rate it 1 to 10, it's probably at a 7 or an 8, but nothing more. Maybe a 7. Early in this Early in his speech, Kennedy condenses the past 50,000 years of man's recorded history into a metaphorized 50 years, which gives human progress a fast pace. And in doing so, he lays the foundation for a sense of urgency his speech will have for going to the moon. Kennedy understands how preposterous it may seem to ask a nation to go to the moon, because the answer will be another question, with what technology? But his continued example, less than two months ago, the steam engine became a new source of power and last... And last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available, sets his audience's gaze on possible technological horizons. After all, if the airplane just came last month, and only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power, then it is definitely possible that we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. This re-understanding of history sets the mood for the rest of the speech by asking the audience to accept the possibility of leaving our planet all the while inspiring them to do so. Okay, now, why does it work? What exactly makes that paragraph and response work? Well, let's point out the most uh, obvious things. Device, strategy, purpose. I try to do this all throughout the paragraph. Early in his speech, and it's important to identify where the thing comes from, right? Never say, in the text, where? Kennedy condenses the past, and I try to blend a quote, 50,000 years of man's record of history into a metaphor of 50 years. And what does that device metaphor do? Well, it creates a strategy, giving human progress a fast pace. That's the strategy. We are moving fast. Therefore, it makes sense that the next ultimate step is going to the moon. So the purpose then is accomplished, which is creating a sense of urgency in the speech for going to the moon. I mean, come on, look at the time period. Right? You're telling these people 50, 60, uh, 70 years ago, we are going to the moon. They have to be wondering, with what technology? That's crazy. But creating this, and this metaphor, creating this, this example in which 50,000 years of history is now 50 years, it gives a sense of speed. Right? What else works about this? Well, there's an awareness of the text effect on the audience. For instance, I say Kennedy understands how preposterous it may seem to ask a nation to go to the moon. I recognize, I say then he sets his audience's gaze on possible technological horizons. And then I say that he asks the audience to accept the possibility of leaving our planet. So I try to show an awareness of how this text is influencing the audience. And you have to show that awareness. So it is not only about mentioning the device and the strategy and the purpose, but also about demonstrating, I know how this is affecting the audience, or at least I have an idea that it may be affecting the audience in some way. Um, style. There's a lot of blended quotations here. 
For instance, he condenses the past 50,000 years of man's recorded history into a metaphorized, I blended the quote to be part of a sentence. Here I just uh, set up the quote. So, but his continued example, quote, less than two months ago, blah, 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 said his audience is gay. So I set it up. This one, I tried to blend two quotes. After all, if the airplane just came last month and only last week did we develop penicillin and television nuclear power, then it is definitely possible, that's me saying it, that we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. Uh, it's good to demonstrate to the reader that you can do several things. You can blend the quotes, you can set up the quotes, you can do several things like that. Try not to only quote words at a time unless you are intent on analyzing diction. But sentences work better. This is probably the lengthiest that you should want to quote. All right. Uh, I demonstrate an understanding of the intended effect. So after everything I say, I say that Kennedy lays the foundation for the sense of urgency. He sets his audience's gaze on this or that. Uh, he sets the mood. He asks the audience. So I show in a, in a, an attempt, a clear attempt from the writer, from the writer, that this is what he's trying to accomplish. Every time you analyze a text, you have to demonstrate the writer's trying to do this, the writer's trying to do that. That's the ultimate goal of the analysis, of the rhetorical analysis. What is he trying to persuade me of, right? Now, here's a follow-up assignment for my students. You're going to pick one of the following paragraphs. You're going to analyze it in a paragraph of your own and put it on the drive. So I won't go over it in this video, but I'll leave it here in the PowerPoint so that you know it. Here are the paragraphs. So one is from the Surrender Speech, 19. Uh, 1877. This one, Winston Churchill. This one, Lou Gehrig, and I think this is the entire speech, and it's a very good one. I like it very much. And uh, Ronald Reagan. These are the four that I want you to analyze. Again, you're going to pick one of the paragraphs, analyze it in a paragraph of your own, and put it on the drive. That's it. We're done.